All right, crafters, we are finally at the end of our project. Uh, sorry, it took two videos to get here, but uh, this is a pretty, pretty involved project. So thanks for sticking with it, and I hope you really enjoy the final part of the painting. This is where it really comes to life. So let's hit that table and start painting that sucker. All right, I spray painted this flat black and I'm gonna use this uh, blue gray on it. All right, this is gonna be for the door. So my lid of the paint there, just gonna paint in the face all around. You wanna be careful you don't get on the uh, frame or other parts. So I'm just using a relatively smaller brush, just painting it up. And then once I get all the face done, uh, oh yeah, that little block at the top there. Once I get the face done, I'm gonna do the edge so I'm going to go around, uh, paint the edge like a royal purple, as uh, pictured in the in the artwork on the cover. And then I'm going to use a burnt umber, and I'm going to get in those little spaces between uh, the details of the door. That way, uh, when I use my bigger brush, you know I won't be slopping it all over the details. So I'll pull that out, and then I'm using the bigger brush, and I'll start. Uh, Applying the uh, burnt umber, I'm putting it on fairly wet. Liberal amount of water added in there. See, it's coming together. So I got all that, and I'm going to go around the base with some burnt umber also, and you'll see why I'm doing this a little later. Not the whole base. I'm not filling in the whole base. I'm just going around the details where that meets the base. Okay, there we go. Got the whole thing painted. Good to go. Let it dry. Yep. All right, now it's dry. I'm going to use my sponge technique. So this is a damp sponge, and I have dipped it in burnt sienna. And I'll start applying it to the uh, sculpture. And uh, give a nice rock texture. Now I'm going to use this color called pebble, which you could use like a tan or anything like that. And it uh, gives the highlight. So I'm just kind of mix it in. Go back to my burnt sienna, start filling that in. A little glob of paint was there picked it off. So look at all those details really starting to pop out. Really neat. Really get that cliff face look. Very cool. So I finished it up, got it all painted. And really look at that. I really like the look of that. Looks really nice. All right. Now I've used some uh, lighter purple, some lavender. I went around the uh, purple, uh, de the royal purple detail of the frame. And you see it's starting to show that those runes that are around the edge of the door because I've highlighted it. Now I'm going to use a lighter gray for the door and do some highlights. I use a little wedge of sponge. It makes it much easier to do these highlights on details like this. So just cut a wedge off the sponge. There you go. Look at that detail popping out. Wow, that's amazing. And just open the door, get some of the edges. That way you don't get it on the uh, purple frame. And now I'm going to use some black, and I'm going to paint in the details. This is a watered-down black. You don't want to water it down too much, but you want to water it down so it's not full-strength black. And when it dries, it'll be a nice, uh, it'll be more subtle. It'll be a nice, sh like, shaded detail on the, on the artwork. So there we go. I'll just go through the uh, runes, pick those out. They're really starting to pop out there. Look at that, looking really, really nice. You can see the runes better now. Go around the top edge there of that block. The details of the door, the face. Give it a nice little shadow. It's really coming to life. Look at that. Really nice. Oops, I forgot that little block, so I'll add some uh, light gray to that little block. There we go. Looking good. Awesome. Amazing what a little bit of paint can do. All right, now I'm going to use some silver, and you'll see why I'm doing this later. But I'm going to put it in the eye socket there. Okay. All right, now my uh, dark uh, brown around the base is dried. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and a sponge. And I'm going to follow that around. I'm not doing the whole base. I'm just going up to the edge there. 
And uh, now I'm going to use the uh, pebble, the lighter color. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to make it look like a cliff that's descending into the darkness. All right. It's kind of like kind of like an optical illusion what I'm trying to do here. <clears throat> so just go around the edge. Now I'm going to paint the cracks. There's some prominent cracks on the artwork, so I'm paint the, some prominent cracks uh, into the top there, which I actually etched in with my hot glue gun. So, yeah, I just did some beads of hot glue and then dragged the tip through the hot glue to make those cracks. There we go, nice. All right, now I'm going to paint the base uh, with some black. Make it darker because the spray is never black enough for me. Kind of pull into the cliff so it gives that illusion that it's going to descending into the darkness. All right, now I have these little uh, uh, oval beads. And I'm going to put them as the eyes. I'm going to use white glue. And uh, that silver, will, I'm hoping, will kind of shine through the, uh, the red bead. You know, the semi-transparent red bead. Or translucent. So put that on there. Just push it into the foam. And there you go. We are set. Let's go to the table. Hey crafters, I wanted to give you a wide shot of this thing. Look how big it is. It's, it, compared to me, it's a really large piece. I think it came out really fantastic. Let me give you some close-ups and uh, we'll look at some of the details on this piece that I really like. But I really wanted to give you a whole view of this thing, how big it is. So, And here we have our little friend Roderick and put him on there and you can see how, how large it is compared to him. So let's take a closer look and we'll talk about some of the details. So here we go. Wow, this piece is so awesome. Got the edging there on the platform and it uh, looks like it's going into the darkness and uh, nice steps there, just really solid as far as the construction. Uh, that glue just makes it really solid, really hard. And I really like the cracks here. Uh, these were on the uh, cover itself and I uh, mimic them by using the glue gun just dragging it through a bead of glue and painting in with some black and just really looks like some nice cracks let's take a look at the texture here that uh, the paper towels and the toilet paper and the glue gun texture just really looks nice gives it this nice rock texture and the door I think just looks phenomenal so I put a figure up there it's very imposing uh, really nice and it's just so cool that extra coolness that the door can open I just think that's so neat and uh, so there we go. There is our homage to the Dungeon Crawl Classics. I hope you enjoyed this vid, and thanks for sticking with it. Hey, I hope you find these tips helpful. If you did, give your old DM Scotty a thumbs up, and that would be a like. Uh, also, uh, check out my forum and Facebook group. A bunch of wonderful people on there. And uh, if you do like these vids, consider tipping. There is a little tip thing on the video. You can click on that and tip directly to your DM Scotty. And if you want to go take it further than that, you can go to uh, Patreon and become a supporter and a member of the family. Uh, I have a uh, monthly magazine called The Crafter's Lair, which you'll have instant access to when you become a supporter. Take care. Have fun gaming. Ah, orc bones. I can never get through these magic doors. Uh, perhaps I can help. I am the Master Wizard G. Uh, what can you do? Well, we could speak friend and enter. Well, I'd rather kill them and take their treasure, but okay.